This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride, I'm James Beastie, and this is the Never Summer Proto Free Ride Triple Camber Technology Tester, uh, but very similar to the production model. Next to it's the Hammer, and then the Big Gun, and the Proto Ultra. Won't be talking about those two, but we'll be talking a lot about the Hammer and the Proto Free Ride, because they're very similar in shape, specs, and everything, except for camber profile, and set back on board. I rode these with my Burton Kendos and my Union Atlas. Was really hoping to get this in a wide variety of conditions, but spring came on in March and just unapologetically never left. Right when I got these boards, just spring happened and it just, that was all I had was spring conditions. So I first took a little time to get to know this board with the camera off because it's a new camber profile and I wanted to make sure I understood it. And to give you a short summary, this has camber between the feet that ends well before the inserts, then goes into that rocker that you know from Never Summer that has camber in the tip and tail after that doesn't touch back with the snow along with a little early rise. So there are a lot of bends happening in this board. It makes for a more locked in feel, a little more aggressive, a little more technical than even Shockwave, their most aggressive hybrid rocker profile. And it's almost there with the hammer in terms of feeling locked in. It's a very interesting feeling. It takes a little while to get used to, but once you do, it's a pretty fun ride. And I wasn't expecting to like all this camber, but I ended up liking it towards the end of my experience with this. And it grips really well too. So let's talk sizing. Uh, this 160, I think I would have loved to try a 156 because I really like the Never Summer Hammer in a 156. They have the same tip and tail width, same waist width per size. And so I think this, this and a 56 would be a lot of fun for me. But the 160 I could handle no problem with my size nine boots and my 185 to 90 pounds at the time I was doing this. And I thought it did a pretty good job for somebody my specs, even though probably a size 10 boot, maybe 10 and a half would be ideal for this. But I like the width. It, I never would boot out with this. And it felt like I could still manage it and handle this board in tight spots. Now, when it comes to the shape, you got five mil of taper. So it's more directional than your average all mountain board. And it's got a little touch of that washy feel. You need a little more back foot weight, but it didn't feel like the Shaper Twin where that felt more tapered than this. And it felt like you needed a lot more back foot weight with that board. And just like the hammer, they feel a little tapered, a little more directional than your average all mountain board, but not as tapered and directional as your average free ride board. Now this camber profile is interesting. It took me a little while to get used to. It's got a just a tiny camber between the feet, then rocker, then camber again, but the camber doesn't touch all the way back down to the snow. So you could feel that little camber between the feet and it sometimes, I, I was wondering if I wanted to detune it because it felt a little catchy, a little hooky sometimes. And when you weighted down the tip and tail, there was a lot of camber happening along this side cut and it felt a little more locked in than I thought it would. And it tracks really well, even better than Shockwave, but it feels kind of locked in, a little catchy. Sometimes I just felt like the camber, all that, all those different camber profiles were kind of fighting each other a little bit. It's not quite as locked in as the Hammer, but definitely more locked in than Shockwave, which is their most aggressive hybrid rocker camber profile. And it was really interesting. At first, I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but the more I wrote it, the more I got used to it, and the more I understood it. I think if this was my board, I might detune that camber underfoot a little bit more so it feels a little less catchy, a little hooky, which is weird, but that's just what I was feeling when I was riding it. 
I think it would really like a detune. So not the easiest to skid turns. I would say it's more for advanced to expert riders. I think over time though, just like I did with hybrid rocker 10 years plus ago, you'll get used to this feeling and it's not gonna have a long learning curve. It only took me about a day to get comfortable with it. Now let's talk flex. This is a really stiff board, really stiff under the camber profile right here. Uh, then it's a little softer in the tip and tail. Compare that to the hammer here, little softer, a little more medium stiff throughout. And I think Never Summer made the Proto Free Ride a little stiffer just to deal with all those bends because they felt a lot more similar on snow than they do here under pretty light when I'm flexing them and playing around with them. I could actually butter the Proto Free Ride a little easier than the hammer and both had just exceptional pop that was Pretty easy to access, took a little bit of work. This took a little less, and it was a little weird to get used to, but you don't really wanna pop from center of board. I, I enjoyed popping from the tip and tail like I do with Shockwave or Ripsaw Camber Profile, and I found that was what I liked, but I'm still learning this and discovering this Camber Profile, so might be different for you. But overall, you have this flex personality that is stiff and damp, and it's got that rubbery dampness that I love from Never Summer. So does the hammer, but yet it pops, and that's just so cool. The, these are just great all-day rides. They really handle every kind of snow you can throw at them well. They can power over stuff pretty well, but if you need to slow down and turn through stuff, messy stuff, they're gonna do fine. They're gonna be fine with micro bumpy to big bumps and everything in between. They're, they're just really damp, all conditions rides that I love. The base glide is great. You've got just a really good, easy gliding base. Never Summer does really well. They're up there with some of the best of them. In terms of speed, it's just like it is damp and, and great with uneven snow. This thing can point it and you can go pretty fast. Now, when it comes to edge hold, this has exceptional grip, a little more so than the hammer. All the other camber profiles and side cuts in Never Summer's line don't seem to grip as well as the Proto Free Ride here. This just has some, some pretty exceptional grip. And I think it's an extra little camber profile between the feet. It just feels almost like a really locked in mellow magna traction. So some might like that kind of grabby feel, some might not. Now when it comes to the turning experience, I really thought that both these boards uh, being wider than I normally would prefer for my boot size would be a little slow, but they weren't that bad at all. And I had no problem turning them with my size nine boots. Even this 160 did a pretty good job. It was sometimes a little weird transitioning from edge to edge with all that camber and that kind of locked in, kind of grippy feel. The transitions weren't as smooth as the hammer or the shockwave in the Proto Ultra but it was something you got used to. And once you got that edge engaged, it had a really hard carve and a really balanced kind of side cut that didn't really favor one style of turning over the other. There was just one consistent thing with the hammer and the Proto Free Ride is they had good spring out of the turn. However, you decided to turn, they didn't do one particular turn really amazing, but did all really good. And that's kind of what you want from a board like this. You can dabble with anything and have a lot of fun and get a lot of spring out of the turn. Yeah, for me, I like the hammer in good conditions, ideal carving conditions. The hammer was my ride, but the Proto Free Ride with its little bit of extra edge hold, I found that I could carve in areas where I couldn't with the hammer. But when I was in areas that were really good, the hammer was just a more satisfying car for me. It's my personal preference. And actually I liked the shockwave camber profile of the Proto Ultra 
which really isn't like these boards. It's not tapered, it's not directional, it's just a true twin with a centered stance. But that had a really good carve to it, and I'd love to see a Never Summer Freeride board with Shockwave. That would be really cool. I wonder what this would be like with Shockwave. Now, when it comes to powder, both these boards have the same tapered directional shape. If you're talking 56 to 56 or 60 to 60, they have the same width, same side cuts, same everything, but they have different camber profiles and different setbacks on board. So the hammer has a setback from center of board at a 22 0.25 inch stance width set all the way back with full size discs. This is 2.625 back from center of board. And that's pretty good, but it's not great. It's, it's better than a lot of all mountain boards. It's like better than the Ripper, better than the Snow Trooper, but not as good as a lot of free ride boards out there in that peer group. And this kind of just sits in that middle ground between free ride and all mountain. This one has even less. This is just two inches back from center of board with the same 22.25 inch stance width set all the way back with full size discs. I didn't get any powder, condition sucked, but I think I might prefer the hammer because I generally lean towards more set back on board. But you don't know till you go, and with this extra rocker and the tip and tail being higher off the snow, I might not need all that setback. So to be continued with powder, maybe next year we'll have some time in these on powder. Now when it comes to switch riding, very doable either way. I like both the hammer and the proto free ride ride and switch, playing around. It tracked well into little bumps that I hit to get air off of and landed very easy. Both of these boards seem like they'd be really fun in the pipe. They have that turning radius that uh, can work in the pipe pretty well. And overall, I think the Proto Triple Camber Free Ride is a really interesting board. It took me a little while to get used to. I'm not sure if it's for everybody, but I think if you're willing to experiment and try something new, you might have a really fun time with it. Personally, I'm kind of enjoying the shockwave and the directional camber a little more, but you know, we'll see over time as I try this with different boards and get used to it more, my opinion might change. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average writer's perspective. There's no brand oversight. And we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite, then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you wanna support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.